This is the ZWO ASI 2600MC Pro, a cooled dedicated deep sky camera made for astrophotography. A few months ago ZWO sent this camera to me and asked for a review. And now it's time for the verdict. This video will not be about camera specs. You can look all of those up on the web anyways. This video will be about my experiences with this camera in combination with my rig. That is why I will first show you the images I've taken with it and talk about the way I captured them. Each one of these four images actually highlights something I want to talk about. Some people also wanted a comparison with the QHY268C, which I also reviewed. That will happen in the end. I am showing you these images in order of how much I like them. Which means that this first image, in my opinion, is kinda garbage. This is the first image I took with this camera and it highlights the first problems I had. The equipment was a small quadruplet refractor and a multi narrowband filter, the Optolon L Extreme. First, ignore the diffraction spikes, an experiment which I will not do again. Only for one more image. I combined 3 minute exposures, 42 of them, and the gain was set to 100. The detail in the nebulosity looks really great, big plus, keeping in mind only 2 hours of exposure time. You might already see some artifacts at the edge of the image. I had to crop this image quite a lot, because this camera is too big for the usual one and a quarter inch filters. You have to use a two inch filter, which puts another price tag on the line. The stars in the stacked image look great, no undersampling thanks to small pixels. This camera and a small refractor, a good combination. The equipment same as before. We all love the Pleiades, but these color gradients are awful. There can be three reasons for that. A bad filter, a camera with bad sensitivity or not enough exposure time. The filter was again a one and a quarter inch one that definitely made it worse. But was it the sensitivity or not enough exposure time? You tell me when I tell you that this image was made of 20 times 300 second exposures. Only 1.6 hours of total integrated exposure time. Which is not much. But still, look at this nebulosity. Ignore this mess over here, that's post production. I may have over edited this image a bit too much, sadly I couldn't get more exposure time. But the camera definitely delivered. I am really in a split opinion about this image and will definitely re-edit it at some point. I don't like the colors, but that's not due to the camera. At this point ZWO was kind enough to send me a 2 inch multi narrowband filter, so we are done with gradients and artifacts, finally. The stars in the center of the image look beautiful. And for transparency I will show an image before I applied Blur Exterminator. The stars are well sampled, maybe a tad bit oversampled due to the small pixels. The equipment was a medium sized triplet refractor with a fetal flattener and the ZWO 2 inch dual narrowband filter. Yes, only narrowband on galaxies is not a good idea, but I had no other option. I combined 120 exposures, each of them 3 minutes long and the gain again 100 for a total exposure time of 6 hours. The stars are a tiny bit oversampled due to the small pixels. If you use a medium to big size telescope, you might have some blurry stars and you might need to sharpen in post-processing. And second, think about this. 3 minute exposures from a bottle 6 to 7 backyard. 6 hours of these exposures. And you can still see some of the famous integrated flux nebula. 
this is my most recent image up to this date. But there is one more. A few months ago, when the nights were still long and dark and cold in winter, I used the 2 inch narrowband filter on something in Orion. I really love how this image turned out. The flame nebula should have been a bit more yellow in my opinion, but that's due to the filter, not the camera. The equipment once again was a small quadrupled refractor and the ZWO 2 inch dual narrowband filter. I shot 35 images with 300 seconds of exposure time and the gain again 100. Only about 3 hours and this image crushed my previous version, which had 4 hours. We can see so much nebulosity. There is no question about it. This camera delivers. For me, there are only two ways to compare dedicated astro cams. Sensor specs and ease of use. Since the QHY268C and this camera have the same sensor, they will perform very similar when it comes to quantum efficiency, full well capacity, blah blah blah. So let's talk connectivity. They both need 2 inch filters, that's a fact. But seasoned ZWO users like me are used to the simple way of an ASI Air. Attach, plug in and you are ready to go. The 268C will need a laptop outside, which means also a small table and protection against the elements. If you are comfortable with having a table and all these accessories outside, the differences between these two cameras are minuscule. But even with a laptop outside, I will tend towards the ASI 2600, because of these extra USB ports in the back, for a guide camera and possibly a focuser. Plus the connection system on the 268C, this adapter ring solution, was kinda garbage. The ZWO ASI 2600 is an advanced, dedicated deep sky camera. If you have some experience in astrophotography and want to upgrade from a DSLR or from an earlier version of any ZWO camera, this is an awesome choice. If you have any more questions or feedback, feel free to leave them in the comments down below. I will have to let this camera go at some point and return to my 294. But that is not really an issue, because if you work hard enough, you can get the most amazing images out of almost every setup. Let's say you sunk 40 hours into an HA RGB mosaic of Andromeda Galaxy. 